gives you advice, yeah, on how to live your life, how to live your life. Hey guys and welcome back and if you're new then welcome to my channel. I'm Cammie and today's video is going to be my labor and delivery like story time. Um, while I was in the hospital I did take notes and like write down all the times for everything and I also did vlog so if you guys have missed the vlog for it I will link it down below and in the cards if you guys want to check that out but I thought I wanted to do a like a story time just to go over everything that happened um in more detail because i couldn't i didn't vlog like every part of it um or like you know give as much updates or information as i could during that time because obviously i was preparing to give birth to ari um so i figured this would just be good and i also did one with parker um if you guys want to check that out as well i will link it it's on my old channel Okay, so let me pull up my notes here really quick. If you are unfamiliar with me, this is my second baby and she is my baby girl. I had a son in 2017. He is now three and a half years old and you may hear him throughout the video because he is in the living room with his daddy. Um, so for this pregnancy, I did have gestational diabetes and so they thought Ari had IUGR, which is a growth restriction. Um, at first they thought it was her abdomen and the ultrasounds and then they thought, um, that it was just regular growth restriction and that she was really small and all of that. So I ended up getting induced, um, it was exactly at 39 weeks, um, it was supposed to be a little bit sooner, but... I, they thought that I did not need to have cervical ripening, so I didn't go in sooner. Um, however, when we did get there, I went on the 16th. At I had to be there at 5 a.m. at the hospital um, to get the Pitocin um, to help start my contractions. Um, because they did, from my last checkup, I think... I had checkup on Wednesday and then I got induced on Saturday, um, but from that appointment they didn't think that I need cervical ripening, um, however, I should have gone in earlier for that, um, but yeah, so I went in early because of the gestational diabetes and the possible IUGR um, because they thought it would be better just to get baby out and be safe and all that stuff. Um, so, we went in and at 6.34 I started having some contractions in my back. Um, so, I can't remember, I didn't write down what time they started giving me the um, Pitocin, but they called it something else, which I will insert here, which is probably just like the generic version of that to help with contractions. So, at 6.34 a.m. I started having some contractions in my back my lower back 7 a.m they said that they were doing a c-section on another patient but then after that that i could go ahead and get the epidural because i opted to get the epidural i had the epidural with my first birth and i was very thankful for it so i wanted it this time as well however this time i they asked as soon as i got to the hospital if i would like it or not and so they were prepared to give it to me um with my other birth they did not ask and i got it pretty late during the contractions and it was in like a lot of pain and then at 7 30 i started getting some stronger back contractions and started getting everything started just get you know getting more uncomfortable getting more pain all of that fun stuff and then at 8 35 is when they came in and gave me my epidural now on my vlog i did include um, showing the process of getting the epidural. Um, if you guys don't know, it's the big old needle thing they put in your back, um, to, you know, to help with your pain levels and it numbs, you know, the bottom half of your body, um, and just makes things a lot easier pain level wise for giving birth. And then, um, at 9.35, my OB came in and broke my water and then checked me and I was still at three centimeters. Um, so that wasn't fun. And then they put me in different positions after that. They got a peanut ball, which I can include a picture of right here. 
and they kept switching me from side to side and having my legs up and all of that stuff um, which is supposed to help I think with the epidural or to help you dilate I'm not really sure they didn't explain it they just came in pretty much every hour and had me flip to different sides and had the peanut bowl there and then I didn't dilate for the longest time and then finally at 1.36 in the afternoon I was at four centimeters dilated so um three centimeters for quite a while and to mention I was at three centimeters when I got to the hospital I was at three centimeters at my appointment on that Wednesday as well so I hadn't dilated from then so that's why I think I should have come in for a cervical ripening uh, but it's fine <laughs> and then um around 2:58 in the afternoon I started feeling a lot of pressure I started getting a very uncomfortable um just it, I didn't feel this with my son, um, but I just felt like a lot of pressure and she had told me, you know, to let her know if um, I was feeling a lot of pressure, which I was, and I felt like I was needing to go to the bathroom. They had had a catheter in me at this point. Obviously, after I got the epidural, I got a catheter put in um, because you can't feel if you need to go to the bathroom or not. So yeah, they give you a catheter and the bag and all of that. However, I did have a little poo at this point um, because I had had like a nervous stomach all day and I hadn't been able to go to the bathroom um, since like the night before, like number two. And so while I was feeling a lot of pressure and everything was happening down there, um, I did have a little bit of a number two. It was just liquidy, the lady had wiped it up and you know, I was embarrassed, but she didn't make me feel embarrassed. She just wiped it up, said it was a little bit, didn't, you know, make me feel judged or anything like that. So that was really nice because I was so scared the entire time um, because I knew that I needed to go to the bathroom. And then, yeah, so at 2.58, I was feeling a lot of pressure and I let them know. And then at 3.05, I f was feeling really strong urges to push because... Um, yeah, she was, she was there. I had dilated really, really fast into the 10 centimeter point. Um, so at 3.05, I was feeling the urge to push and they were trying to get my OB doctor to come in. And so when she came in and checked me and I was a 10, they started getting everything ready. But by that point, there was another patient who had needed her and it was like a emergency type situation so I had my legs up in the stirrups and Ari's head was right you know there um what is it called I was I was crowning at this point and my OB had to go to another patient so I sat there you know doing my little breasts um you know I didn't push her out for I think I sat there for like 20 minutes with the doctor away you know just breathing through the contractions and all of that um because they didn't want me to push her out until the doctor got back but i was crowning at that point they could see her head they <laughs> it was just it was awkward because you know, they were like oh she has hair like because they could see it because my legs were up and i was ready to push they just didn't want me to push yet and i could you know feel stuff at this point um, so that was just a weird experience to have to control, um, you know, not to not push her out, even though I really wanted to get her out at that point and to just breathe through everything. Um, and everybody, while the doctor was away, they were like, you're not going to have to push very long because they could see her like coming out. Um, and I just couldn't push so finally my doctor came back in and at 3 50 in the afternoon Ari was born I only had a couple of pushes I think um we did like two rounds of pushes like I think I pushed three times and then you know took a little break and then I pushed another couple of times and she came out um all beautiful and healthy I'll show my sweet baby you guys can see her all beautiful all snuggly in her little oh she's giving me the eyeball 
Yeah, so they can. She came out at 3.50 in the afternoon. Um, and then I cut the cord. My husband did not cut the cord. He didn't cut the cord with our firstborn either. He um, is a little squeamish about all that stuff. So I did cut her cord. Um, and because she, uh, well, because I had gestational diabetes, they of course had to check her sugar levels while we're there and make sure that everything is okay. So, um, they had to check it, I think it was a total of four times. She had to get her levels checked four times and it was bef after, um, I breastfed her. So after she breastfed, the lady would come in, I would call them in and they would check her sugar levels. And the last sugar level she got was midnight. Um, that night was her last one that they checked. All of them came back really good, which was really nice to hear. Um, because of course you're worried about that having diabetes and all of that. Um, but she came out a healthy weight and all of that. So we didn't need the NICU people in there or anything like that. We had called them originally, but um, they were also dealing with the emergency situation. Um, but she came out healthy, so we didn't need them anyway. Um, and then at 1.40 a.m. on the 17th, they gave her a bath. I wasn't there for that. Um, she did stay with us the entire time. I don't know. I mean, besides, like, when they took her to check or whatever. I know in some places, they, like, take a baby to the nursery and let the baby chill there for a little bit. But that's not what they do at our hospitals. That wasn't what I experienced with my son either. Um, so they gave her a bath at 1.54 uh, in the morning. Um, I was obviously not getting sleep and everything because you have to breastfeed about every two hours and you know people are coming in um to check her sugars as well and plus you have to have people come in and check your vitals and all of that um so yeah that was pretty much it for our little hospital stay we did stay a total of 24 hours i did ask if i wanted to stay longer than 24 hours and i did not um i did get to eat regular hospital food i scarfed down a sandwich after birth um because i was hungry because i couldn't eat throughout you know that day i had something before we went to the hospital and then you couldn't have anything to eat till after i gave birth um and also a sandwich because you can't have deli meat while you're pregnant unless it's warmed up. And also you can't have bread really um, for the gestational diabetes. So having a sandwich was just really nice to eat after giving birth. hope that you guys enjoyed hearing about my labor and delivery experience. Um, and yeah, I hope that you guys have a really good day. Thank you so much for watching.